special edition of Knicks Fan TV. CP on the check-in. Tonight's guest spent 13 years in the league, 13-year veteran. Five with the Knicks from 05 to 09, as well as the 2012-2013 Knicks Take Team. One half of the best podcast in the game, the Knuckleheads Podcast. Quentin Richardson in the building, a.k.a. Q Rich. Q, thanks for giving me some time, man. How you doing, bro? And I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me. Now, as we segue to this Knicks versus Magic MLK matchup, um, what have you seen? You know, Knicks on under on the Tom Thibodeau, similar to Steve Clifford. You know, came up under the Van Gundy coaching tree. You yep. have two teams that came out to a fast start: Magic six and three, uh, one of their best starts in years. Knicks five and three, one of the best starts since your team, the Knicks tape team. Similar philosophies as well, and two teams battling injuries. Um, starting with the Knicks, what's been your impression so far? This Knicks team on the tips. Man, I'm liking what I'm saying, man. They look like he letting the boy Julius Randle, you know, run off with the plug. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm like, he, he out there looking like a baby triple double ready to happen every game. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, he, he playing like a monster right now. So um, I, I love what I see out of him. You got the young boy uh, from Kentucky just, just playing really well. Really, yeah. I always liked Austin Rivers and thought he was, you know, uh, not as appreciated as he as he should be, but um, love the way he's out there playing. But uh, Mitchell Robinson is one of my favorite young players in the league, man. I love, I love his athleticism and his motor. He, he, I love guys that have that high motor to just run, 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 play, 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 and he doesn't need the ball to impact the game. That's the biggest thing that I love about him that he can, you know, shot block, catch alley you, tip dunks, and, and impact yeah. offensive glass and stuff like that without ever having to get the ball. So. I, I like what they're doing, man. And Tiz has always been known as a, you know, a defensive-minded coach and a and a tough, hard-nosed, uh, you know, really, really regimented coach. So I think I think the future is bright, man. I got my man Worldwide West. Worldwide West in the building. That you know, he's traveling with the team. He's dapping everybody up after wins. So it, it seemed like you know the culture is starting to turn a little bit. I, I definitely like what I've, I've seen so far. You know, you mentioned Mitch and. Um, Mitch's development, you could see on the Tibbs and Kenny Payne, seems like it's taking it up a notch, especially on the defensive side of things. The blocks is down, but he's playing a lot more discipline, you know, right. not falling for the pump fakes and not, uh, uh, you know, just going for the, for the you know, boneheaded fouls, you know, really helping his team by staying on the court, you know, staying durable and, and staying disciplined. You know, he's taking on the challenge of a lot of the premier bigs in the game, whether it's Andre Drummond or, or Sabonis, had to take on Jokic the other night, you know, probably Probably the best center, one of the best players in the game. Now he's coming up against Vucevic. And I feel like Vucevic is a guy that doesn't really get much respect in the league. Is one of the best in the game. I mean, he's averaging about 25 and 11 against the Knicks in, in the last five. Averaging a double-double on this on the season right now and over 40% from three. What's the impressions of, um, of Vucevic? All-star. I mean, like you said, he's a guy who flies under the radar and doesn't get a lot of credit, uh, you know, a lot of credit. That's partially because, you know, Orlando hasn't won really big. And mm. then it's just kind of like it's Orlando. So they don't view Orlando as one of the big premier cities and stuff like that. But Gucci has has been consistent. Steady Eddie stayed with, you know, 2010. And right now, no way he's not an all-star. With the numbers he's averaging, the way he's playing right now, he's, a, he's for sure an all-star in this league. Yeah. It's going to be an intriguing matchup, man, especially with his prowess on the perimeter, starting to take more threes. I think he shot about six threes last night against the Knicks. Last night. Yeah, six, six last night. So I think that's a tough matchup for Mitch in terms of how he guards him out there on the perimeter. Um, Aaron Gordon, you know, you mentioned Randall. Those two guys in the same draft class, 2014, Gordon picked fourth, Randall picked seventh. Uh, their futures with their team still kind of murky, you know, on and off in the trade rumors and, and things like, of that nature. But now we're seeing Gordon take more of a um, playmaking role with the Magic, I guess, based on the injuries to Fultz and Carter Williams and so forth. Um, what, what, how, do, how have you seen, you know, Gordon's career with the Magic and, and his impact on this team? I think he's been steadily progressing, man. He's trending in the right direction. I mean, especially this year with him making the switch to like kind of the point forward role. Um, He's been in that role about four or five games, and I think every game, you know, he's gotten he's gotten better and better and more comfortable. His assist numbers are up during that period of time. His shooting is up, and I mean, I think it's kind of like, you know, how it is, kind of like for players where when you get told to do something, you kind of a switch goes off your mind and you kind of change. So I think he he he's flipped that switch and he's just getting more acclimated to it. But he looks he's looking 
more and more comfortable every night. Like I told him, like we talked about last night. I mean, he was played against the Bucks the other night, and and Drew Holiday is one of the premier, you know, perimeter defenders in the league. And AG was able to bring the ball up the court and get us into set without getting the ball stolen one time and without, you know, being you know, deterred from getting uh, getting the team set with a, with enough time on the clock and the shot clock and all those things. So he was doing well, and I thought that was a, in my mind, it was like a moral victory for him. Just the bookmark, like I just played point guard against Drew Holiday, and, and I didn't screw up the offense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, That's yeah. Job well done. Yeah, it's an interesting confidence builder because as I look at Randall, you know, Fisdale gave him that responsibility last year. You know, Fisdale mm-hmm. really made it a point to have players, you know, stretch above and beyond what their usual role is. And I think Randall embraced it, but he, he I think he struggled a lot last year in, in that role and really being the number one guy here in New York, dealing with that pressure. So he would turn the ball over a lot and, and you know, dribble into double teams, trying to make a play and just make a lot of mistakes. But on the Tibbs, you, you're seeing a lot more um, control in, in Randall playing in that point forward spot. Six dimes, a career high at, in, in his um, statistical averages. So, Certainly, I, I, when I look at Randall, I see him now making winning plays. And right. that's what I talked to, to Channing Fry about. Channing Fry was like, you know, he, he just doesn't make – he's he puts up the numbers, but he just doesn't make winning plays for his team. And I think that's the difference in Randall now and, and why they got out to that fast start of five and three. Yeah, man. I mean, it's amazing how, you know what I'm saying, just, just another year can get somebody comfortable. Because, you know, like you said – if you're not ready or you don't know what to expect, or it just may take a year just to get used to New York and what comes with it, just from all those aspects, from being going, being looked at as the guy, you know what I'm saying? Because Randall, that's what, how he's viewed right now in New York with that team. He's one of the guys. Mm-hmm. So, you know, him and RJ Barrett, they're learning. Like, I feel like Barrett is taking another step from his rookie year after getting to be in that city and know and, and absorb what it's like to be in that Knicks uniform and what is expected of him being the first high pick and all of that stuff. So all of these guys are learning on the fly. And I think it's just, you know, Coach Tibbs makes it that much more comfortable yeah. when he has, when you got somebody steady and somebody who's going to be on you and you know exactly what you expected of. Absolutely, man. And and uh, going back to that coaching matchup, Clifford and Tibbs, you know, cut from the same claw, same philosophy and everything. Um, but you got to give Clifford credit. You know, this this Magic team has made the playoffs past two years. And, and you know, he's done a lot, I think, with a little in terms of dealing with injuries and also just an overall lack of talent. Um, talk about the job that Clifford has done with this team since since you've been there and, and watching them. Man, listen, Coach. So, Coach Cliff was my assistant coach when I when I played here for the Magic under Stan Van Gundy. So, I've known Coach Cliff since way back then. And um, Coach, I was extremely happy to see him get his, uh, you know, start out in um, Charlotte head coaching. But I I had no doubt, and I'm, I knew he was going to be a great head coach when he got a shot. And so, uh, for him to have, you know, the success he's had coming here, it, it hasn't surprised me because he workaholic, you know, extremely, extremely detailed, knows the game, very knowledgeable the game, a great defensive orientated coach. And um, to me, that's what really drives everything he does, his, his defensive games and the way that he teaches the team to play defensively because we haven't always been as talented with offensive players. But like you said, he, he does a tremendous job at, 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 uh, at getting guys that do more than they actually are, uh, did you, than you expected them, and um, getting more out of, I guess you would say, what you would expect is little. So, man, Coach Cliff has done an outstanding job here down in Orlando. And like you say, two years in a row in the playoffs and, and trying to do it again. Yeah, and, and uh, I see the same thing with, with Tibbs and this Nick team, you know, really overachieving on the defensive end. And uh, yeah, I think they have about a top 10 defense or had in, in the past couple of weeks. And again, I think that's really been what's been propelling them because like the Magic, this Nick team struggles to score the ball, you know, half court transition, fast break, three pointers, you know, one of the worst offenses in the league as well. I think what's interesting to, to when I do my research on Clifford and, and I hear the people and I read the people on the beats kind of um, criticisms of him is um, kind of a stubbornness, you know, to kind of stick into one thing, even if it may not work and, and really going with it for, you know, in terms of rotations and, and lineups. And as we watch this Nick team in this early stretch, you know, the Knicks fan is very impatient. We're seeing a lineup that's continuing to struggle with Alfred Payton as the starting point guard. And, you know, more and more the fans are calling for uh, quickly to start. So it's, it's, it's just interesting to see, you know, the whole play development philosophy in terms of 
how these guys approach playing the young guys, whether it's starting them or bringing them along slow. With Clifford, you see Cole Anthony seem like they were kind of along that track, you know, bring them along slowly, but the injuries kind of pushed them into that starting lineup. So what do you think about those criticisms and, and how, you know, Clifford kind of approaches that, that play development track? For me, I think, you know, you, you have to understand what fan, fans are fans, you know, like, if they did take out and start, you know, who they wanted them to and they weren't playing where they're going to complain about that too. So as a mm. coach, you, know, you had to do what you know was right for the team and what you believe is right for the team, not what everybody else believes. That's why you're the coach. So who knows if the Quigley kid goes and he replaces up with Payton, like he's the numbers he's getting and the way he's playing is because of the position he's being put in. Mm. And that could change if he was put in a different position. You understand? Like yeah. it could go either way. Maybe it could go better. Maybe it could go worse, but you don't mess with success all the time. And especially, like you said, they're trying to bring a young kid along slowly, let him continue to grow. As far as what Coach Cliff does down here, man, I, I think he he was absolutely in the place where Markel was the guy and everybody knew that and he was doing a great job uh, early in the season. Then he had the unfortunate injury. Yeah. So obviously in a situation, next man up, uh, Cole Anthony has been thrust into a starting position. And uh, I'm sure he's ecstatic about it and he's up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, that he's, uh, you know, obviously not loving the fact that it took Markel to get hurt for it to happen, but anybody would, would, would relish and want this chance to, to start as a rookie and kick their career off this soon. Yeah, it seems like with both coaches, you know, they, they want to give their young guys um, a little bit of responsibility, hold them accountable to it before they, you know, inch them up some more. But like I said, as the, as the losing piles up, both teams coming back to the pack. And you know the Knicks fan is, is hungry for, you know, more wins, man. That 5-3 and three star had him itching. We had fans calling in talking about, we going to the playoffs, we going to the playoffs. Then five straight losses, they like, trade this guy, trade that guy. Tibbs is messing up, so... It's just, uh, you know, thrill of victory, agony of defeat, man. But we'll see how they match up come come MLK, man, and, and see who gets off the snide, for sure. For sure. That's right. It'll be an early day. Yeah, going to be an early one. Going to be an early one, man. Q, I, I definitely appreciate all the time you, you gave and, and, and the gems that you dropped, man. And looking forward to the next episode of Knuckleheads. And um, <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your final, you know, message to the, to the Knicks fans out there? Man, I know it's hard, man. Be patient. Somebody coming, somebody going to choose. <laughs> hey, listen, because I'm telling you, whoever it is, whoever it is, like, I'm telling you, when they get it, it's over. It's that's over. It. All it takes is it's some young boy out there growing up right now that that's all they want to do is put the Knicks on, and, and y'all going to get y'all one. Oh, hopefully. Like you said, they'll, they'll be king, man. But, but Q, thanks again. Good luck in the MLK matchup, Knicks versus Magic, and uh, hopefully we can do this again soon, man. All right, man. Holla. Yes, sir. Thanks again, bro.